In light of The Witcher 3's release for the Switch, and also because to this day I'm still getting asked fairly often, I'm making this video to let you know how to get every ending, as well as each and every ending variation for The Witcher 3, including both of its expansions, Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. I'll start with the main game, but if you're only interested in the expansions, there will be timestamps down in the description so we can skip right to them if you wish. It will be spoiler-free in the beginning, but eventually there will be spoilers and I'll warn you in advance. Alright, despite the many small variations, which I'll address later, The Witcher 3 has three main endings. I'll call them two good ones and one bad. Even though it's entirely up to you to decide which one is good and bad, I'll just call them this way for convenience. So, there are five choices throughout the game that determine which one of the major endings you'll get. One of the five is optional, or skippable, so you can potentially have four determining choices. In order to get one of the two good endings, you'll need to make three right choices out of the four or five available. And to get the bad one, just do the opposite. Now, here are the five choices. Number one is right after the Battle of Kaer Morhen. Ciri will get upset that her training with Avalach is not going anywhere, and Geralt has two ways of responding to her. The quote, right decision is to choose to play snowballs with her, and the wrong one is to tell her that she doesn't need to be good at everything and to have a drink together. Once again, I'm calling these choices right and wrong for pure convenience, you may feel the opposite is true for you. Number two starts right afterwards, and it leads to the skippable choice. You'll have the option to take Ciri to Emir, her real father, or advise against it. If you do not go, you end up in the situation where you are only left with four major choices. But if you do, the right decision here is to refuse his payment for your services, and the wrong one is obviously to accept it. Which is some of the awkwardest moments in gaming. I, I kinda like it. Thanks. Carol? Ten. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and that makes an even 100. That is all of it. Initial here, please. Right, for number three, you'll have to wait a bit until you get to the point where Philippa Eilhart summons Siri to have a conversation about her future. You'll be presented with two options here. The right one is to let her have the conversation alone. The wrong one is to accompany her inside and speak on her behalf. Moving on to number four, which may take a while to get to, and it's when you reach Avalach's laboratory. Before exiting, Siri gets upset once again and you'll have two options. The right one is to encourage her to trash the whole place, and the wrong one is to calm her down by giving her Lara Doran's necklace. And number five is immediately after number four. As soon as you leave the lab, Siri will want you to accompany her to Skal's grave. The right decision here is to say yes and go with her. The wrong one is to say that there's not enough time and refuse. Siri, no time for that. You can go later. We've more important things to do now. Yes, there are always more important things. Okay, with this we conclude the spoiler-free section. Now we shall talk about each of the three endings and how to get the differences between the two good ones. But before that, let me quickly address something about the bad ending. People have argued whether Geralt and Ciri really die or not. I want to try, at least, to put that argument to rest. The answer is it's left to our own interpretation. I'll say that Ciri's death is less certain, chances are she succeeded and simply refused to come back to Geralt because she no longer likes him. However, during the drinking choice, we see a scene with a cat dragging a dead swallow, um, and the crones also said she died, so eh, who knows. As for Geralt, the biggest proof that his fate is left to our interpretation is the fact that his personal ending variation, of which I'll talk more about later, simply isn't shown during this ending, on purpose. So, if you want the ending I just described, you need to be making the wrong choices I talked about. But what if you want one of the other two? In one of them, Ciri becomes a witcher, and in the other one, she leaves to eventually become Empress of Nilfgaard. Here's what you need to do to get each of these. 
The simpler of the two is the Witcher ending. For it, just don't take Ciri to see Emir, make three right choices of those mentioned above, and that's it. Those are the only two conditions for you to get the Witcher ending. There are other ways to get it, but this one is the simplest. The Empress one is a tad more complicated. For it, in addition to the three right choices you'll have to make, you also have to take Ciri to Emir and ensure that he wins the war in the end. Because if he doesn't, even if you took her to him, she'll once again become a Witcher. So how does he win the war? Well, you have to do two things. First, kill Radovid. The quest chain for which starts way early when Dijkstra comes to talk to you after you solve the mage problem with Triss. And after that, you must also make sure that Dijkstra isn't the one who rules the north, meaning you have to side with Roach when the time comes for it. So to sum it up, if taken to Emir and if he ends up winning the war, Ciri leaves to become Empress. And if one of these conditions aren't met, she'll once again become a Witcher. Again, provided that you had three right choices out of the four or five available. Okay, we're done with the main endings. Let's talk about the minor variations now. I'll call them epilogues for convenience. So let's start with Geralt's epilogue. He has three or four, depending on how you look at it. The first one is of him being alone on the path. This happens if you either do not romance any of the two sorceresses or try to romance them both. The second one is with Yennefer. This happens if you tell her that you still love her during her personal quest called The Last Wish and also let Triss leave Novigrad. The third is with Triss. To get it, you have to either skip doing The Last Wish altogether or tell Yennefer that the magic is gone if you do the quest. Also, you need to tell Triss that you love her when she's about to leave. Keep in mind that you can have the romance scene with the unicorn in Skellige and that will not ruin the Triss romance. And the fourth one, if you want to call it this way, is during the bad ending, as I mentioned, as he potentially dies. Right, let's talk about the rulers now. Emir has two epilogues, uh, one where he lives and conquers the north, and one where he fails and ends up dying. I already explained how to get those two, and that they are tied to whether Ciri can get her Empress ending or not. As for Radovid, if he lives, this happens if you simply do not do the quest for his assassination, he gets his own triumphant epilogue, which is accompanied by Emir's death. If Radovid dies, but you side with Dijkstra and not Roach, he is the one who ends up ruling the north, and once again Emir dies. Skellige also has three potential rulers, each of them gets their own epilogue. You get Yalmar if you help him and his sister, and then take his side when the time comes to resolve the Berserker's dilemma. You get Ceres if you do the same, except you side with her during the Berserker attack, and you get Svanriga if you either do not help the siblings or simply refuse to resolve the Berserker thing. And while it's not said in the epilogue, Ceres and Yalmar actually die in that case. You can watch my video about it if you wish. And that about sums it up. There are several other epilogue looking bits before the game ends, but to avoid making this video super long, I'll skip them for now. Besides, they're not part of the actual ending, and they do not affect it in any way, so um, if you're interested, I'll leave links to them down below. In case anyone's curious, let me tell you how I personally finished my first playthrough. I played Snowballs, then I chose not to visit Emir, later I let Spiri, Spiri? Uh, Siri speak to the sorceresses alone, when the time came I gave her the necklace, and then joined her to visit Skjall's grave. So I skipped the optional choice, I made three right and one wrong decision and got the Witcher ending. I also assassinated Radovid and didn't side with Dijkstra, so Emir ended up ruling anyway. I also romanced Triss Merigold and Ciri became queen of Skellige. I'll give you a minute to quickly write a comment about how my choice of romance was wrong, or if not, to perhaps give this video a like if you've enjoyed it thus far, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so. Alright, now Hearts of Stone, The Witcher's first expansion. Best $10 I've ever spent. There are two endings, both with one small variation. The first ending is where you let Gontor Odim take the soul of Olgird, and it is achieved by refusing to interrupt Gontor Odim or by not talking to the old professor before the ending. In this case, you won't even have the interrupt option. That ensures that Odim takes the soul of Olgird and rewards you with one of several things. If you want, you can check a video in the description about each and every reward. And the variation I talked about here is if you play the expansion before the Battle of Kaer Morhen, 
you can actually ask the man of glass for one extra thing, namely how to find Siri. He says that you will certainly find her, but you'll have to be concerned of other things and basically tell you how to avoid what I called the bad ending. And of course, the other ending is where you challenge Odim to a game of sorts in return for letting Olgird go free. To get access to it, you must seek Shani and by extension the Professor before you meet Olgird in the temple. What do you propose we play? Gwent? Doing so gives you a plethora of curious lore about Gontor Odim, as well as a few creepy moments. Then you'll be able to interrupt him before he takes the soul of Olgird, and inside the dream world, in which you're transported, you'll have to find a mirror, or more specifically one that cannot be broken. Upon succeeding, Odim leaves, lifting the spell that plagued Olgird, and in reward he gives you his sword. I would take the opportunity here and recommend you watch a video I made about Hearts of Stone, which uh, you might enjoy. And it's time for the second and bigger expansion, Blood and Wine. Its size also translates into more and more varied endings. I've actually already made a video about it a while ago, so if you've seen it, you can probably just close this one, but if you haven't, let me give you a brief rundown once again. Blood and Wine has four endings, based on who lives and who dies among the Anna Henrietta, Sienna and Detlaf characters. So number one is the ending where you choose to um, visit the unseen vampire elder. Summoning Detlaf this way leads to the ending where every one of the three characters dies. You are forced to kill Detlaf and you've no way of preventing Sienna from killing the Duchess and then dying as well. Number two is basically the same ending but achieved differently. If instead of the Elder you seek Sienna and enter the fairy tale world, there will be an option to get her ribbon from the little flint vendor girl. If you obtain it, it will save Sienna when Detlaf tries to kill her, and then you'll be forced to kill him in turn. Following that, you'll have to refuse to investigate with Rages, and that will lead to the exact same thing happening, Sienna killing the Duchess and then dying alongside her. Number three is the ending where you seek Sienna, but do not take the ribbon. That will enable Detlaf to kill her and have his vengeance. From this point, the ending can play in two different ways. You either let Detlaf go or kill him. Both choices result in you getting imprisoned and Dandelion having to rescue you. The main difference is of course that Detlaf can live in one of them and it is also the way for Rages not to get banished from Toussaint. And number four is the most difficult to get ending. It involves taking the ribbon once again killing Detlaf and then convincing Sienna not to kill Anna Henrietta. So, after choosing to seek Sienna and not the Unseen Elder, there will be several critical choices you need to make in order to achieve the ending I mentioned. Let me play a short compilation with every single one of them. What the... Found a notebook. Property of Isabel de Roquefort, court governess. The notes of Sienna and Anna Henrietta's governess when they were little. I'm not sure it will help. But I suppose there's no harm in leafing through them. Came to free you. Nice of you, but a waste of your effort. I plan to free myself. You might, you might not. Bound to be easier with my help. Give Sienna the ribbon. Why not, huh? Sugar Plum. The only thing I hand out for free is a first hit. To get them to come back for a second, of course. Well, since you brought it up, I'd gladly hear the rest. Let's see. They had escorted you out of the duchy. Yes. All in all, why not check up on that? We'll go together. Assuming we're done here. I am done, yes. It's a matter of importance to the duchy. Hand it over or I'll take it from you, plain and simple. But I was to deliver it personally. Because she turned her back on you, then banished all memory of you? Bravo, Geralt. Yet another riddle solved, and your sick curiosity sated. Perhaps, just for a second, you could stop dwelling on all the wrongs folk have done you, and forgive her? Sienna, 
You were exiled when she was how old? Twelve? Thirteen? She was a child. What was she supposed to do? Rebel? Organize a coup? Steal your father's seal and forge a pardon? She was powerless. Wiped you from her memory not because she didn't care, but because your departure was traumatic for her. She forgot because that was the only way she could handle the pain. Ugh. You really want a happy ending, don't you? Ah, with all of us living happily ever after. Go, Witcher, or they'll give your medal to another. And that would be a shame. Farewell, Sienna. And that about wraps up the endings, now it's time to talk about who can come and visit you after you're done. If you romanced Triss or Yennefer in the main game, one of the two will show up in your vineyard. Eventually they'll even move in and go to bed and whatnot. If you didn't romance anybody or attempted to romance both, and if you got one of the good endings, Ciri will show up to visit you. If she became a witcher, that version of her appears, and the opposite is true for the Empress ending. And finally, if you did not romance anyone and got the bad ending, your good friend Dandelion shows up to see you. There are some small variations within his visit based on whether you were imprisoned or not in the end of Blood and Wine, as well as whether or not you completed the Carnal Sins quest, of which I've made several videos actually. Also, let me point out that if you haven't finished the main game, the quest where somebody visits you will not trigger until you do. And if you haven't yet freed Dandelion in the main game, you can't even start the Blood and Wine expansion. Okay, and I think with that, we are done. I hope this video was helpful. I wish you all luck in getting the endings you desire in The Witcher 3, be it on the Switch or otherwise. I thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my supporters on Patreon and YouTube members. And until the next video, stay tuned and be good.